Hey, everybody. Welcome to the third part of Logan Grimnar's Rise to Power. We're going to be dealing with the Wolf War today, so let's just get right into it. And afterwards, we'll talk about maybe why there are no wolves on Fenris. <laughs> There are few enemies the Space Wolves loathe more than those who turn against their own kin. Traitors, Oathbreakers, and Turncoats. When Logan Grimnar learnt that the Arch Traitor, Abaddon, had found one of the Lost Wolf Brothers, he assembled the champions of Fenris to deliver the Space Wolves justice. For the Space Wolves... One of their greatest and most closely guarded secrets is the fate of their one and only successor chapter, the Wolf Brothers. Created as part of the second founding, the Wolf Brothers' gene seed proved unpredictable and unstable, combining all of the worst aspects of the Canis Helix and the curse of the Wolfen. After the Wolf was the chapter was disbanded, the Wolf Brothers vanished entirely, taking with them prized gene seed created from the Space Wolves' own stockpiles. In the year 612 M41, word reached the Great Wolf that one of these long-lost brothers was found. For millennia, the Space Wolves had been watching over their wayward kin, secretly shielding them from both the wrath of the Imperium and the influences of Chaos though not always with success. So it would be that this time the glad news of the Wolf Brothers' discovery was tainted by the word that the planet upon which he rested was in the hands of the Black Legion. Worse still, rumor placed the arch-traitor Fabius Bile within the system, and Grimnar knew it could only be the Wolf Brother and his unstable gene seed that Bile sought. Access to the successor chapter's gene seed would enable the traitorous geneticist to create an army of monstrous, corrupted, mutated horrors to fight for the forces of chaos. The great wolf would be damned before he let this come to pass. Calling his wolf guard to his side, the old wolf ordered his great company gathered. So armed, Grimnar, his most trusted champions, and a small fleet of ships set out into the Sea of Stars to find the Wolf Brother and slay any who dared stand in their way. And now a little excerpt. Who are the Wolf Brothers? Well, let me tell you. In the aftermath of the Horus Heresy, the Space Marine Legions were broken down into smaller formations known as chapters, so that no one could ever again hold power over an entire legion. Some of the legions divided many times and spawned many successors, while the Space Wolves divided only once. Their sole successor chapter, named the Wolf Brothers, was forged during the second founding. It was a dream of the Primarch Lehman Russ that the Wolf Brothers would be the first in a series of chapters drawn from his genetic ancestry. And the wo Space Wolves, along with their successors, would create a cordon around the Eye of Terror to shield against future attacks from the traitor legions. Tragically, the gene seed of the Wolf Brothers was fatally flawed, leading to the manifestations of large numbers of wolven and other more terrible abominations within their ranks. Shortly after their creation, the chapter was disbanded by Ordo Astartes and its stores of gene seed destroyed. Its surviving battle brothers given the choice between a death in glorious combat or a shameful execution. Wouldn't you like to be the person who got the form to check that out? What do you think? They passed it out on a data slate? So, which one are you going to check today? Glorious death, shameful execution. All right. Sorry. <clears throat> Never mind. <laughs> However, before Odo Hastarti's orders could be fully carried out, much of the chapter disappeared, the Wolf Brothers vanishing into the depths of space. Some within the Adeptus Terra accused Lehman Russ of warning the successor chapter, or even aiding their escape, though no proof was ever uncovered. To this day, rumors persist of small bands of Wolf Brothers fighting with renegade chapters or living as pariahs in the shadow of the Eye of Terror. Ba-boom! And now, back! To part two, the Well of Souls. Keen hunters 
and able Voidfarers. It did not take long for the champions of Fenris to find the planet on which the Wolf Brother was hidden. Despite the stench of traitors hanging heavy around the Eye of Terror, guided by an intelligence collected by his Wolf Scouts and following the auger scent left by the Black Legion, Kraft, Grimnar, and his wolves came upon the world of Lumerius. A frozen ball of frost and snow, barely warmed by the watery light of its distant blue star. Lumerius was where the wolf brother lay, imprisoned in the ice-locked ruin of a shipwreck thousands of years old. From the command bridge of his strike cruiser on the far edges of the system, Grimnar considered the reports of his wolf guard and the faint outline of the Styx class heavy cruiser, Well of Souls hanging like a dark splinter in the milky eye of Lumerius. Grimnar had chosen a small but elite flotilla of ships for speed and stealth, and lacked the brute strength to take on such a powerful vessel in open combat. Neither could he ignore it, however. In the end, it was his champion, Arjak Rockfist, that came up with a daring plan to take out the enemy vessel. One that brought fierce grins on the faces of the champions, and a thundering din as they beat their fists onto their chest plates in approval. Like shadows racing across the night sky, a salvo of boarding torpedoes silently bore down upon the well of souls. The space wolves had launched the missiles from the depths of space, letting their engines burn cold until they glided in under inertia alone. Inside the lead torpedo, Grimnar, Arjak, and a dozen wolf guard shield brothers braced for impact. Seconds before they struck home, the Chaos Vessel's augers detected them. Enemy crews scrambled to quad las cannon turrets and crack missile batteries. As the void came alive with slashes of light and the fire of the wolf guard joked over the vox that they might have to swim the rest of the way. As the armored hulls were rocked by nearby explosions and raking las cannon fire. Grimnar's torpedo had had its tip sheared off by a fusillade of turret fire, vaporizing the servitor pilot and sending the craft spinning. It tumbled through the open launch bay doors of the... Well, there's the gift of the author for you. Seriously, he, was, he had his tip chopped off, the pilot killed, and it tumbled through the open launch bay doors of the Well of Souls, crashed onto the deck with a screech of tortured metal, and apparently not a single one of the motherfuckers suffered a scratch. Anyways... With a bellowing war cry, Grimnar smashed his way free of the wreck, the first of the champions of Finris, out into the hold. Tangled in a twisted ruin of gantries, the torpedo had skidded to a halt beneath a Heldrake roost. Dozens of the demon engines hanging like monstrous mechanical monstrosities hanging overhead. Black Legion... Chaos Space Marines on the deck below fired bolters, one-handed as they scaled ladders to meet this unidentified threat. And now, a little quote. Follow me, and I promise you glory and adventure. Follow me, and I promise that if you fall, your name will be sung as long as the sons of Russ walk the stars. Logan Grimnar. Moments later, Arjak and the Seal Shield brothers rejoined their lord. The first Black Legion warrior to reach them had had his head hacked from his shoulders by the axe of Morkai, while the second was torn to bloody ribbons by Grimnar's stormbolter. Stirred by the sounds of battle, a Heldrake descended from above, sweeping out its wings and snatching up a wolf guard terminator in its claws. Even as the demonic beast soared off over the launch bay, the veteran smashed at it with his hammer, cursing the creature and the warp that had spawned it. The Heldrake let out a metallic screech as it tore the space wolf apart in a shower of gore and shattered ceramite. 
It's kin heeding its call and unfurling their wings. Bolt rounds hurtled up from below, blasting ragged holes into the gantry and exploding against the Shield Brothers' armor as the traitor space marines concentrated their fire on the invaders. In the air above, Helldrakes circled like gargantuan carrion birds, swooping down to snatch up Wolfguard or washing off space marines with flaming death. Arjak Rockfist held the center of the space marine formation. The anvil shield bashing aside the razor jaws and claws of the Helldrakes as they snapped hungrily at the space wolves. While Foehammer scored fracturing blows against the creature's warp iron hides. Again and again, his hammer was cast as the demon engines, at the demon engines, each time flashing back to his hand in an actinic blaze. With his warriors outnumbered and trapped amongst the wreckage of the insertion, the old wolf had known from the start that it would be but a matter of time before they were overwhelmed. Thinking on his feet, Grimnar struck at the supports of the gantry from which the enemy reinforcements were arriving. In a shower of sparks, the walkway came free, the scream of twisting metal drowning out the cries of the Helldrakes as it hurtled to the deck below. And now we have a little profile. Arjak Rockfist. The towering warrior known as Arjak Rockfist has served as Logan Grimnar's champion for longer than some men live. A mountain of a man, Arjak was as large even before he drank from the cup of the wolven. Growing to become a true giant as the Canis Helix took root within his flesh. However, it was not his size and strength alone that won him an honored place at the side of the great wolf. Arjak's bravery is matched only by his unflinching loyalty to the chapter and his battle brothers. And countless times he has placed the lives of his packmates before his own. During the Battle of the Weeping Stars, Arjak was the last to abandon the crippled strike cruiser Fangs of Fenris, dragging wounded brothers to the Salvation Pods even as the Hulk burned around him. While protecting the Great Wolf on crystal plains of Valden Nine, Arjak filled the mirrored gate with the corpses of the Hormagants until the weight of the Tyranids' own dead halted their advance. Arjak's strength affords him the ability to wield weapons of unusual bulk and heft. The Anvil Shield is a huge storm shield that can be used as a bludgeon in itself. Many a foe's skull has been shattered on the ruin-covered surface. Foe Hammer is an equally overlarged thunder hammer, which delivers devastating blows when combined with the champion's superhuman strength. Foe Hammer is more than merely a potent close combat weapon, for it incorporates an ancient miniaturized teleporter keyed to Arjak's gauntlet, allowing it to be hurled at the enemy from a distance before returning to its wielder's outstretched hand in a flash of scorched atmosphere. Ba bam! Yep, so let's just call it Thor's Hammer, shall we? Because that's what I'm going to call it. Next, Guns of Chaos. While Logan Grimnar and his wolf guard were locked in combat underneath the Heldrake Roost, the rest of the champions of Fenris had reached the Wells of Souls. In their own torpedoes, Ranulf Ironfang and Ingvar Thunderbrow led a pack of wolf guard void claws. Clad in hulking Terminator armor and armed with paired wolf claws, they proved deadly in the close quarter fighting. Enemy crewmen would try to erect hasty barricades in quarters and void locks, only to crumble before the fury of the space wolves. Only when squads of black legionnaires confronted them did the advance slow. The deafening hammer of bolt gun fighter and blinding flash of wolf claws filled the corridors. After each brutal skirmish, 
Ranulf would make some jest about the quality of their foes while grinning at Ingvar. And each time Ingvar would shake his head in silence, only once allowing the ghost of a smile to cross his features when Ranulf hurled a deckhand at one of his erstwhile overlords. Meanwhile, in the depths of the ship, Grimnar fought his way towards his intended target. Reduced to a handful of shield brothers, the Great Wolf's forces smashed its way through the Black Legion defenses with hammer and shield. The, with arcing hammer blows, the Space Wolves caved in blast doors to carve a path. Finally, the Great Wolf and his packmates emerged into the Chaos Cruiser's gun-loading deck. Vast beyond reckoning, the deck spanned almost the full length of the vessel. Along the outer hull, towering macro cannons, each the size of a hab block, pointed out into the void. On overhead tracks, cranes and hoists transported shells the size of land raiders, whilst thousands of slaves hauled on chains of black iron under the lashes of their overseers. Grimnar pointed with his axe to where fresh ordnance had been carried up from the ship's magazine below. Here was where they would cripple the Well of Souls and take her out of the fight. The vessel's captain was no fool, however, and between Grimnar and his goal, there was a dozen Black Legion Terminators, blackened by, backed by throngs of maddened cultists. Bearing his fangs, Grimnar raised the axe Morkai above his head and charged. As the two sides closed, bolt rounds and auto gunfire whipped between them, detonating in clouds of scorched flesh or ricocheting from Terminator plate. Then, with a deafening crash, the two sides met. Against the disciplined elite, the Black Legion of the Black Legion, the disorganized rabble of the cultists, the pride of the Space Wolves proved their skill and ferocity. Brutal hammer blows, flashing fangs, and crackling storm shields all took their toll as Space Wolves were dragged down with savage snarls on their lips. Though the Black Legion were dire foe indeed, under the protection of the Shield Brothers, the master of the Space Wolves and his champions slew them to a man. As Grimnar tore the Axe Morkai from the throat of the last Chaos Terminator in a spray of blood, he realized that only he and Arjak remained standing. Bloody but unbowed, the Great Wolf gave the signal to Arjak, who hurled Foe Hammer with all his prodigious strength into the critical workings of the macro cannon shell hoist. As the chains broke, a massive shell fell back down into the ship's primary magazine with a deafening detonation. Heart of the Void Ranulf Ironfang was the first to step onto the Well of Souls bridge. His hulking gray form lumbering through the still smoking remains of the void lock. At his side, Ingvar Thunderbrow and a score of other void clouds thunder across the deck to meet the Chaos forces. As the Space Wolves pressed their assault, Voidheart favored the Despoiler's lieutenants, watched them come. Clad in baroque black armor with a helm of twisted horns and a leering face of a demon, Voidhard sat on the vessel's command throne, overseeing his warriors below. From all sides of the huge chamber, Chaos Space Marines marched forward, blades and bolters ready to end the invaders. Ranoff howled his challenge and charged, his brothers close on his heels. Everywhere, the air was filled with the clash of mass reactive bolter rounds and the screech of ceramite being rent asunder. Eyes fixed on the demon-faced Chaos Lord, Ranoff forged a bloody trail across the deck. His heavy Terminator armor turned the blades and bolt rounds hammering down upon him, whilst his frost blade parried blows and flashed out to sink into heretic flesh. 
By the time Ranoff reached the base of the command throne, his armor was scarred by dozens of blows, and his sword was crimson with blood. Voidheart leveled his demon blade at Ranoff as he descended from the throne, promising him an eternity of torment within the warp. Ranoff's response was blunt, crude, and to the point. Voidheart easily repelled Ranoff's first flurry of attacks, and at once the face wolf knew how dangerous an adversary he had faced. His foe's demon blade cut darkly through the air around him. Black warp flame danced hypnotically along its edge. Voidhout's hatred for the space wolf was almost palpable in its intensity, a feeling Ranulf held in equal measure for the thrice-cursed traitor standing before him. <clears throat> for a span of agonizing minutes, Ranulf tried to breach Voidhart's guard, but the demon sword seemed to move with a mind of its own always there to turn his frost blade. Sparring a second, sparing a second's glance across the bridge, he could see his brothers equally pressed by the massed ranks of the Black Legion, and was forced to accept that there would be no aid against Voidheart. This moment of distraction was what the Chaos Lord had been waiting for, and in an instant his weapon flicked forward in an attempt to pierce Ranulf's skull. Only the wolf guard's acute senses saved his life, and he twisted partly out of the way. Even so, the unnatural blade pierced his helm and scored a bloody line across his face, burning away his left eye. Howling in rage and pain, Ranoff bared his fangs and snarled at the void heart. Deep beneath Ranoff's mind, the shadow of the wolven stirred to life, and the space marine hurled himself at his foe like a wounded thunder wolf. The two exchanging a flurry of blows. However, it was only when an explosion from far below threw the combatants off balance that the tide turned. A momentary opening allowed Ranoff to hack off Voidheart's sword arm at the shoulder. Clutching the ruined, bleeding stump the Chaos Lord fled the bridge, his crew moving to cover his escape. As another explosion from below rocked the deck, Ranoff heard the crackling Vox message from the Great Wolf, ordering them to withdraw. Cursing the escape of Voidheart, Ranoff hurried to obey the command of his Wolf Lord. Supporting their wounded, Ranoff, Ingvar, and the remaining Void Claws enacted a fighting retreat. Down through the decks of fire and ruin they battled, clearing the way with the savage fervor of cornered wolves. As the space marines reached the aft launch decks of the Well of Souls, the Chaos Craft was already listing dangerously towards Lumerius. The damage had been done. Debris raining down, all around them, the wolf guard fought their way onto the awaiting storm wolves as the great wolf led a defense of the extraction point with the surviving champions. Ranoff was the last to step onto the ramp, pausing only to spit contemptuously on the deck. Now that's a very interesting statement because I would have always have expected Logan Grimnar to make it a point of being the last to leave the deck. But apparently, Logan left first, and Ranoff gets to be the last. And another excerpt, the Iron Fang. Logan Grimnar chooses his wolf guard from only the greatest of the chapter's warriors, those battle brothers that have proven their bravery and skill beyond doubt. Ranoff Iron Fang was a member of the Iron Blood tribe before the Sky Warriors took him, and grew up on the shores of the legendary Captain... on the stories, sorry, of the legendary Captain Grimnar and his fearless crew of prepubescent raiders. When he first met Logan Grimnar, it was like the great sagas of the clan had come to life, 
and he vowed there and then that he would prove himself worthy to fight at the great wolf's side. Ranulf first came to the attention of Logan Grimnar in the battlefields of Reisgan II, the space wolves arriving to defend the planet from the massive Dark Eldar raid. When a gray hunter, Ranulf, then a gray hunter, Ranulf was among a handful of space wolves thought lost during the frenzied fighting in Rangan's Maze City. Only months later did the chapter discover that an Eldar had taken their battle brothers to Camarag and subjected them to unimaginable trials of blood and death. Well, obviously it was very imaginable because it happened. From this hell, Ranoff escaped. Holy shit. He escaped from Camarag. That's that's got to be a story I need to read somewhere along the way. Maybe somebody is that actually a story? Is there a novel out about that? Because uh, seriously, being captured by the Dark Elder, transported to Camarad, forced to fight in their gladiatorial arenas, escaping the city and getting back to a planet—that, my friends, has got to be at least a three-book series. Because that's no easy shit to do. It even says right here. From this hell, Ranoff escaped, something virtually unheard of in the sparse imperial records that for, of that forbidden realm. You can say that again. And a feat that earned him a place in the ranks of Grimnar's Wolfguard. There you go. In the near ceaseless gladiatorial bouts of the arena, he had received countless scars and injuries. Among them, the loss of one of his fangs. Really? That's one of his big injuries? He got one of his teeth knocked out? The loss of one of his fangs, smashed from his mouth by an enraged orc war boss that would do it. Thereafter, its iron forged replacement would become his namesake. Next. And we're going to go on with. Fiends of the Deep, because this is like the longest video I've made so far. So, until next time, bye.